Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm Sheila G the PAC and this video will be my first ever Zebra of the Month video. You're probably thinking, what on earth are you talking about? Well, in medicine, we refer to pretty rare conditions as zebras just because you don't see zebras every day. If you work in or are studying medicine, you may have heard the phrase, chase horses and not zebras. And what that means is that when we are diagnosing medical conditions, we always must consider the more common conditions first before jumping to the more rare conditions. But it's always important to have a good understanding of the more rare conditions as it may save someone from serious trouble. So in this series of my channel, I'll be reviewing dermatological conditions that are pretty rare, but still very important to know because you just might see it. So today's zebra is a rare yet serious form of acne known as acne fulminans. Another name for this condition is acne maligna. The condition presents as an abrupt development of severe nodulocystic acne with a lot of inflammation, ulceration, and the possibility of systemic symptoms. It most commonly affects teenage boys, but more specifically between the ages of 13 and 22. Although rare, it can affect females as well. The acne tends to be worse on the chest and back, but may also affect the face and the neck. As previously mentioned, acne fulminans may be associated with systemic symptoms, meaning symptoms that involve other organ systems of the body. More specifically, acne fulminans may lead to fever, fatigue, and generalized joint pain known as polyarthralgia. Lab and radiographic studies may also show abnormal findings, including leukocytosis, which is a high white blood cell count, elevated inflammatory markers such as the erythrocyte sedimentation rate and C-reactive protein, and areas of damaged bone, known as osteolytic bone lesions seen on imaging. These bone changes, if they do occur, tend to be more common on the anterior chest wall or the epiphyseal growth plates. Talking a little bit more about the acne itself, the acne involved in acne fulminans occurs abruptly and dramatically and tends to be more hemorrhagic and ulcerative where those acne nodules and cysts start to bleed and form a crust. Due to the significance of the inflammation involved in this condition, acne scarring tends to be very significant, especially if not treated promptly. The cause of this destructive form of acne is not very clear, but we do have some causal factors that have been identified, including a possible genetic predisposition, as well as increased testosterone levels and anabolic steroid use. It's also been shown that acne fulminans may actually occur during the first month of initiating isotretinoin, better known as Accutane. I have a whole separate video on isotretinoin and what it does, but basically isotretinoin is a oral retinoid that's actually used to treat severe acne. So interestingly, although extremely rare, isotretinoin may actually induce acne fulminans in certain patients who may be at risk at developing the condition. And that is why some providers may prescribe half of the standard dose during the first month of initiating isotretinoin just to offset the risk of developing this condition. So acne fulminans is classified into four main types, acne fulminans with systemic symptoms, acne fulminans without systemic symptoms, and then you have isotretinoin-induced acne fulminans with systemic symptoms and isotretinoin-induced acne fulminans without systemic symptoms. <laughs> so that last classification is actually the most common form. Up to this point in my career, I've actually only ever seen this condition one time, and it was actually in a female patient who started isotretinoin. So she had isotretinoin-induced acne fulminans without systemic symptoms, thankfully. For those presenting with this form of acne with or without systemic symptoms, it's very important to check the patient's vitals, including their temperature, and to order specific labs, including a complete blood cell count, liver function tests, inflammatory markers, and a urine pregnancy test in females. To be clear, patients presenting with this destructive form of acne should be sent to the emergency department immediately, as most patients with this condition um, will require hospitalization depending on their severity. So although vitals should be taken in the dermatology office in order to conduct a thorough exam, as far as labs and radiographic studies, a lot of that's gonna be ordered in the hospital regardless, but it's always good to consider that. Now discussing treatment, this type of severe acne does not respond to oral antibiotics or other traditional acne treatments such as topical medications. Due to the condition's severity and potential for systemic findings, an oral treatment is required. For those with isotretinoin-induced acne fulminans, it is important to immediately discontinue isotretinoin. 
oral prednisone, dosed at 0.5 to 1 milligram per kilogram per day, is then started and continued over about two to four weeks or until those crusted lesions start to heal. Once we see healing of those crusted lesions, we actually reinitiate isotretinoin. Yes, we start isotretinoin again, and that is slowly increased as far as the dose, while that prednisone is then tapered over an additional four weeks. Isotretinoin is then continued on for about five to six months. For those with acne fulminans not induced by isotretinoin, the gold standard treatment is that oral prednisone at the same dose um, given over about two to four weeks until those lesions heal. And once again, once those lesions start to heal, we initiate isotretinoin for them as well um, for the first time. So same sort of thing, over an additional two to four weeks, that prednisone is actually gonna be slowly tapered down while that isotretinoin is gonna be increased and um, the patient's gonna stay on that for about five to six months. So for those with more resistant acne fulminans or those who are simply not candidates for isotretinoin, other medications that can be initiated include TNF inhibitor, biologics, immunomodulators, dapsone, and even tetracyclines in some cases. So the prognosis for acne fulminans is overall very good and reoccurrence is exceedingly rare. However, if lytic bone lesions had occurred during the flare-up of acne fulminans, there may be residual hyperostosis or sclerosis seen on imaging, um, where basically in those areas that were affected, there's either increased bone density or decreased bone density. Excessive granulation tissue and scarring still occurs in about 43% of patients um, who developed acne fulminans, and that scarring can be very, very difficult to treat, but we still have options, including intralesional steroid injections, microneedling, and even laser treatment options. So there you have it, our first zebra of the month, acne fulminans. Thank you guys so much for watching my video and if you have any questions, please feel free to comment down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel for all things dermatology content. Again, I'm Sheila G, the PAC, and I'll see you next time.